I'll be right there. Hi, and welcome everyone. Thank you for clicking in. I am honored that you chose to spend your time here with me. I'm Carol Riganali, founder of the Google Plus community Parenting Joy, a small but high quality parenting place on Google Plus. I'm a parenting coach and family management expert working from home on and off since 11 years. Due to community wishes today, we will talk about working from home as a mommy. Is this a hangout just for mommies? No, of course not. We're just talking about working from home and also being the primary caregiver. That could be men just as well as women. So I will give you a quick overview from working from home. I'll have some sheets I'm going to show you in between. And I wish you fun. And if you have questions, you can chat in, even though this is an after recording because we had some technical difficulties when we had all the guests. So I'm just going to go back to the questions we had at this point. Working from home as a mommy is um, based on a three very basic things that you need to work from home. The basics are you need a lot of self-control, a lot of discipline. Um, I also believe you need a door to close and you need a well-prepared child. And on the end, but not because it's less important, you do need a lot of flexibility to work from home because it's always going to be different than you expect. If we talk about working from home, there are like three different things to talk about. One is you can do office work, working from home. Then you can do client work. And then there is also phone calls and other noise sensitive work. Office work is easy to accomplish at home. It's the basic from working from home. And it's also something that you can adjust to your schedule, to your children's needs, needs, and that's why it is the easiest to handle. Client work is a different topic, but still usually not too advanced because it's something you can arrange, you can organize babysitters, because you usually do know in advance. The phone calls and other noise sensitive work uh, work is usually the struggle maker by working from home because it's not so easy to say oh wait a second right now this minute I need to be gone or just everyone shut up and be quiet or be calm that's something that often doesn't work so that's like I would call it like level three or the high-end level from working from home everything that comes unexpected impulsively and needs to be taken care of immediately while you offer a quiet surrounding that's why I would like to go back to you afterwards on the three kinds and on how to organize them best. But first, I would like to take a look at the different age groups. Um, I separated the ages of the children into baby, toddler, child, and teen. A uh, toddler can basically understand mommy needs to work now as a sentence. Um, he can understand it under the circumstance that he has been well prepared, that he has been adjusted to it, and that he's been trained in a fun way, in an understanding way. A child and teenager, that should not be an issue. They do know when they've grown into it what working from home me means. Only interrupt when urgent is still also a point where a toddler only up to a certain point can have an understanding what, what it means, and it means that you need a lot of time and some experience, you and the child together, on how to handle that and how you can help for it. Wait on when they feel is a need is another interrupter that often is done, that children come and interrupt you because they feel a need. They feel like they need you right now. So children, Overall, always feel everything that they feel is urgent. And here it needs a long way to prepare and, and work together on an understanding how that actually is meant and done. When you have a baby, I would settle it in three points to watch out for. First, when you have a baby at home, use the sleep phases. Sleep phases are the beginning and the end of your working 
from home when the child is small. So use the sleep phases unless or of course only when you're sure that you don't need to sleep because that's something you need to care, take care of too. But when you know you don't need to sleep, then go work while your baby's sleeping. That's your best bet you get during the day. Then I would really take care on setting up a nice place for the baby next to you. Um, often it's more useful to make it on level on the desk or put a table close to it so the baby is on level with the desktop if you're working on a computer because kids just like to see what's going on. Then also be flexible and patient because they don't understand anything. They don't want to bother you. They don't want to be unhelpful, but they just don't know better. So be patient. Working with a baby is really about ch taking chances when you get them. Um, on the toddler, I have some more points, so I'm going to show you the screen on this one again. If you're working with a toddler, there is more issues to take care of. Basically, I would take care that the child is not in the room while you're working. Later on, I will get a little bit more into it, why it's so ex important. But for the child, it's very hard to be right next to you and not disturb you. Because when a question pops up and someone is next to you, you should actually be able to ask. And that is not possible if the that is possible when the child is in the room and you can prevent that by having the child, the toddler, not in your room while you're working. Also, you have to build up a safe surrounding for the toddler to be. So if the toddler is not in your room, where will he spend his time? Where will he be? Also build a barrier to you, but still leave the doors open. I'm not a big fan of closing the doors. I'm a big fan of leaving the doors open, but putting up like a baby safety door to the child's room. Because the child's room usually is something where the child feels comfortable, where it should be safe. And you can still hear the child, talk to the child, and also kind of have like one ear back there and hear what's going on. And also show the child in a nice but clear way that it's his time there, it's your time in the office, and then you'll be back and having fun together. And then we would go to the secret ing ingredient I want to offer you on this Hangout. And I would like to tell you what the secret ingredient is. And that clearly is to play them on. That's the secret thing. The secret ingredient to, to successfully work from home as a mom is to play them on before you leave. That means that when I go and want to work, I first prepare just like you put on your shoes and get into the car when you drive off to work, before you start working at home, you play the child on. Meaning, you go to the child's room, explain. The, ideally, the child already knows that you're going to be working. And then start playing something. Build a, start building a Lego house or start playing with the dolls. And then excuse yourself while the, if the child is nicely played on. Children are able to play by themselves if they're taught and learned and had a chance to develop this ability, if they've just trained for it and if they're started up. So a start-up child, an unplayed child, will give you some time to work. And the more you proceed in doing this, the better and the longer this time amount will be. When you hear the doors are open, like we said, but the child is in a different room. When you hear the child is having trouble or is not really happy anymore, go back there and do the same thing again. Play them on again. Also be sure to simply explain repeatedly why and what you do. Also explain what the profit is of you getting to do the work. The child is at the toddler age clearly able to understand what his profit is from you working and also what the profit is from letting you work because then you're going to be done faster and be back for some fun activity for family time. The children even at the toddler age are able to understand that very well if you speak to them and explain to them in a childlike easy language. If we go forward to a ch to children, kindergarten up, um, definitely keep the kids out of the room. It's really important and good for you. If the kids are in the room, that is possible just as well, then make sure it is an 
special situation for the child because then they will treat it with more respect and also be happy of it. Um, they can be in a room for strictly controlled uh, surrounding for home for, for arts and craft if they do it quietly and it really does not um, interrupt you and disturb you. But overall, it just should be like a family matter that everyone knows when mommy is working, when daddy is working, they're in this room, in this corner, doing it for themselves, and afterwards you get the full attention back when it is done. At the child's age, I would start to close the door. It's easier for you, it's easier for the children, and then we're back at the noise-sensitive work that's just clearly easier to be done when a door is closed. That's why I believe having a door to close is really helpful. And if that means doing it all in your bedroom, setting up a little office there, then do it. You're really not going to regret it afterwards. At a child's age, I think it also makes sense to set times when you're at the office. A child at this age is clearly able to understand that Monday afternoon, Wednesday morning, or every morning, mommy has to do a certain amount of office time at home, and then we'll be back. And also here, even more than with a toddler, why should the child let you work? What's the profit for the child when you're working? So make sure you have take time to explain to the children what's their earn on you working, on what's their earn on letting you work, on not disturbing you all the time. It needs to be very clear and also the result needs to be visible on what it changes when the child keeps interrupting you. For an example, you do have time to go to the park, but when the child does keep interrupting you, then make sure the child does understand that you would have loved to go to the park, that you really planned on going to the park, but due to all those interruptions just happening, there is just no time left. And then go into a process with the child, work on it, and next day at time when the child does better, I'm sure you will go to the park. Also, when we talk about all those promises, make sure that you do never promise stuff you don't intend to keep or you can't keep. So if you are not sure if you will have time to go to the park, make sure that you communicate that and say, I wish and I hope it is time for the work, but mommy has that much work to do. I'm not sure yet. I'm working on it. And I really hope that if I can go fast, we will go to the park. And if not, and there you need the second options, if not, then I could offer you this or that. And also with a child, back to the secret ingredient, play them on. Make sure they're played on, know what they will get. And playing on at this age can also just mean that the child gets to explain you all the homework it has. You look through it real quick, and then the child is free to go, not having big questions, and you're free to go do your part. With a teenager, I think we don't need to talk about whether the door is open or closed. It definitely is closed. Then um, teenagers from their age are very eager about instant, instant results, instant replies, instant met of all their meat of all their needs. Just instant. Teenagers are instant persons. So if you're working from home, and because of them being very instant in their in their phase of life. Um, my suggestion would be that you make sure that they're texting you. For teenagers, which maybe doesn't make sense just hearing it, but it does make sense knowing the story behind and the biology, Child teenagers are instant. That's just a fact. So make them text you. Most teenagers have cell phones for free availability. If it's not a free availability, then make it an allowed use during your office hours that they text you and not interrupt you. Teenagers like to be needed, so meet them when you're working. Explain to them, if they've grown up with it, they already know all of it while you're doing it. So expect them and meet them to help you along while you're working. They are old enough to stop people at the front door to tell people at the office that uh, at the phone that you're at the office right now that you're working and you can't come and pick up this minute and that people should call you back 
So upgrade your teenager to a personal assistant. Let them be your help and let them feel the need of their help because teenagers usually do respond very, very well to that. They can also handle drop-in guests at the front door and just all sorts of things. So make them be part of the game. Again, they will be very willing to do it if they know the purpose of it and if they know the advantages they get for it. Advantages can be many things. It can be just being a happy mom because it is good for you to work from home. It can be vacations, vacations or other things that are just on impossible financially if you're not working and bringing home, home some income. It can be many things and I'm sure you know very well why you are working from home and why you chose to work from home. I have some important things I would like to share with you when we're talking about working from home. Let me get you the screen. Children need a way to reach you at any time. So no matter what happens and how it happens, they, there needs to be some way for them to reach you. It's not an issue of working from home or not working from home. It's an issue of being a good parent. So make sure wherever you are and whenever you are somewhere that the children have a responsible person they can reach. It doesn't need to be you in person, but then it could be daddy, it could be a day caregiver, or it could be a grandma, but there needs someone to be reachable for the children at any point then children can learn to respect you if it is two-sided. So make sure you do understand your children's need. You take care of the children's need. That clearly does not mean that you do everything they want or that you just let in on everything. But it means that they do need understand to understand that you're trying to do your part too. Children need to be well taken care of at any second of your working time. So don't just shove them up. Don't just put them in front of a screen. That should be reservated for emergency or urgent or special situations. So babysitter, TV, not a good idea. Really, I know it's tempting, but it's not where you want to go as a responsible parent. Anyone employing your needs needs to understand that you might have to run to urgent situations after all, you're a parent. So also not an issue of working from home, but an issue from working as a parent. There will be, no matter how hard you try, there will be situations where you have to run off. If someone does not understand, I'm really, really sorry, but then try hard to find solutions because it will happen. It can't be organized away. It always will happen. And working with children is never easy. It takes flexibility. It takes creativity. And it just takes a huge amount of patience. So while you're a parent and working, just try to be creative. Try to trade off with other people also, because all the parents are struggling with the balance of work and life. Everyone in your neighborhood probably is that has kids. And so trade off, get some help, get, get creative. I know you do, you can, you have the ability to do it. it. just You just need to get going and you'll find out it's really not that hard. So I think that was the most important things. We can go back to the questions. Um, I had questions on what's the pros and cons from working from home. Well, the, a big pro for working from home for me personally is that I'm very flexible. I would not have been able to work the percentage of work I was doing um, if I would not have been working from home. I like that I don't lose time driving home and going to work. I like that I'm available for urgent things. And I like that it is low infrastructural costs. That's when founding or grow, building a company is a quite important factor. But it is hard. That's the negative part. It's very hard to be gone when you're home. And it needs, for me, it needed a lot of practice and experience to find out how I can accomplish to be mentally be gone and still be home. Then it needs a lot of self-discipline. Um, it needs the ch children care. It does not need just mean that just because you're not working from home, you don't need daycare. 
you usually do need someone around in the background, especially if you do have noise sensitive work to do. And it also means you don't have mates. And that sometimes is not the thing to go for primarily when you're already a mom home with the kids a lot to also be home working. So the mates and the friends, just a team around me is probably the thing I missed most in the years I was completely working from home. Another question we had is um, building a family culture of not interrupting. It takes time. It really does take time to build this culture of non-interruption. But it is possible. It will not happen over time. It's a process. If you have are just starting out and having a baby, it's a process that will come along naturally. If you have older children and starting up with it, give it time. Prepare them, explain to them, and really take them for full. And never forget about the secret ingredient. If you want some time for yourself, play them on. It just needs time, and there will be time. Finding opportunities to work from home is another question we have. Um, first, you need to find out what am I good at and what do I have to offer. If you know this, then you can approach places to ask if they would like to have you working from home. Best bets usually are colleagues or small business owners because they are still looking out for low infrastructure which you would be offering while you're working from home, and also for small percentage work, which is primarily better when you're having kids, unless you depend on more. Then, um, like I said, startups are a very good bet. Um, then doing bills, doing phone calls, doing mail service, also support things are very good things to work from home and then of course when you're starting up a company because of the low costs and everything home often is the thing you choose because you like or because it just suits best then another question was how do i deal with the guilt of not spending enough time with the baby or thinking of work while being with the baby well the first part of this question the guilt that really is something every parent knows. No matter whether you're working from home, working away, not working at all, moms and dads, especially the moms, tend to feel guilty. We feel like we could do more. We feel like we should do more. And even if just a full-time mommy is doing the, her household chores, moms sometimes do feel guilty. So that guilt thing is just a thing about mommies. It it's not that much about work, it's just about being a mommy and trying very hard to do our best in a society that really makes it hard on us because if we work, then it's not right. If we don't work, it's not right. Society doesn't give us guidelines. They kind of Society kind of expects us to work. At the same, same time, it expects us to be there all the time. So guilt is a matter of being a mommy and it is not a matter of working from home. And then, again, I will not stop today, I'm sorry. That's it. Play them on. Even if it's a baby, go every once in a while and just entertain them. Do something little with them. And then it's just a fact kids do not need you all the time. Sometimes we like to feel that they need us all the time, but they do not. They are very well capable to play on themselves. I see and saw in my own children, children kids that are able, even at the age of six months or three months, to play 30 minutes to an hour all by themselves if they have a nicely set up place that is entertaining enough. Strength from hanging, hanging from above with little toys and stuff, they don't need you there. And they should grow up and develop the ability to live life by themselves. Not meaning that we just take a happy baby and leave it alone because it doesn't call for us, but just doing it with your mind and your heart. You will feel, you will see what the child needs and never stop their ability just because you think they need something that they might not even need or not even consider to need. The second part of thinking 
to the, of the baby when you work from home, that is a typical thing of self-employed. If you're starting up a company, if you're starting up a new business, then you'll be it'll be constantly on your mind. Also, when you have a new project you feel responsible for, you totally dive into it with your mind. That's situations where you think about it everywhere. And you're probably not only thinking about it when you're with the baby, you might even think about it when you're with the husband on a romantic dinner out. So it's a thing of passion, and passion just is in our heart. It doesn't go away, it's just there. We can learn to handle it a little bit better. We can learn to make a difference. We can make, learn to really try to shove it aside. But passion will always be on your mind, no matter how hard you try. And sometimes everything that's left is to say sorry when it gets us one more time. And we're just thinking about it in a moment where it really does not suit. Yes, I think then that was the questions we had. Um, in the chat right now, everything is quiet, so... Um, maybe a last tip that if it really is hard for you, for you to focus on your baby, why not make a deal and go back to work an extra 30 minutes and then be back and really focus on the child? Or tell the child, listen, mommy still has some things on her mind. Let me go and write that down real quick, and then I'll be back with you. Just make sure that they do get full and 100% attention every once in a while, or not just every once in a while, every day, many times, because that's what they deserve. And that is not in conflict with working from home, not even 80% or 100%. You still can give them undivided attention as they deserve. So I'm going to let you run with that play them on strategy and hopefully some information. If you liked it, tune back in. I will be doing more Hangouts, trying to serve you answers to questions that are being brought up on my business page, Baby Choi International, or on the Parenting Choi community on Google+. So bye. Thank you very much for listening. I feel honored that you took the time and spent it here.